Hi guys, uh, this is Mr. Rego. Uh, welcome back to our series Beat the Test review for the E, the Geometry and of course exam. All right, so let's tackle this proof, okay? So we have question number 19 is a big proof. Let's do one step at a time. All right, uh, so let's read. Prove the following triangle. Prove the following triangles in isosceles triangle, okay? Given, this is the given information. Remember, every proof you have statement, you have a column of statements, and you have a column of reasons. All right, sometimes they give you blanks on the statements, and sometimes they give you blanks on the reasons which they have right now. Fortunately for us, I guess they're giving you they're giving us a bank of statements on the bottom. Okay, so they give me four, five, seven reasons. Let's see. Given <coughs> OL is congruent to OY. OL. So as, as they give me information, the best, best thing to do is to put information in my drawing. OL congruent to OY. OL, L is right here. So this side is congruent to OY, to this side. Got it. Two marks right here. If those are the same, that means my triangle, mid triangle, is an isosceles triangle. Right there. Excellent. Angle Y is congruent to angle 3, angle Y, here's angle Y, and here's angle 3, congruent, nice. So most likely we have, we're going to have a relationship between the big triangle and the little triangle somehow. Angle L is supplementary to angle 5, L. It's 5 and L, these two are supplementary, the sum of them two equals 180. Okay, that's given. As you can see, that's my first statement, and my reason is given. Done. Triangle ROG is an isosceles triangle. ROG, that's what I need to prove. That's going to be my question. Look at this. That's the last statement. Prove that that triangle is an isosceles triangle. All right. Let's keep reading. Select the correct statement for statement four. Statement four. But well, hold on. Statement four is there. Oh, okay. So thank you. Statement four. Statement four is done. Done. All right, cool. That was my first question. Uh, and the correct reasons for three, five, and eight. So I need to do three, five, and eight. So those four dots are the ones that are required. Okay. But again, guys, we're doing a proof. Because we're doing a proof. It doesn't matter if they ask me only one statement, only one reason. Everything else is blank. So how do I know to get there? A proof is a step-by-step -step process. Okay, guys, a proof, I know we don't like them too much, but again, it's just a statement, it's just one reason at a time. It's technically explaining what happened on the left. You see something here on the left? All right, so what was the reason for that? That's it, nothing else. So we gotta fill this thing, let's do it. Okay, so we have a bank of statements on the bottom, which is really good. Let's start. So angle L congruent to angle Y. How do we get there? Angle L congruent to angle Y. Hmm. Okay. So I know, I see that. Oh, first of all, there we go. I understand now. This is an isosceles triangle. The big triangle is an isosceles triangle. Therefore, angle Y and angle L, L I'm sorry, they're congruent. Because the sides are congruent, then my base angles are congruent. Therefore, we're looking for something that says base, 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 converse. No, that's to prove the size. I saw so this base angle. So here we go. This is going to be my R2, reason two, base angles, base angle theorem. Excellent. Uh, so those are congruent. Nice. So these are two incongruent and congruent to that. Angle L congruent to angle three. Oh, you see, I just did that. So if these two angles are congruent and angle Y is congruent to angle 3, therefore L is congruent to angle 3. That's called transitive, transitive property. And then here we go. That's my R3, transitive property, one of my first requirements. If two angles are equal and then another two are equal, then the first and the third are equal, transitive. Four, uh, angle 4 is supplementary into angle five, four and five. So let's change the color a little bit so we can uh, angle four and five. Oh, four and five, yes. That's a straight line. Let me make it on the side. This is four and this is five. 
that's a straight line. Straight line, that's called a linear pair. A right supplementary means I add the two angles equals to 180. This big angle is 180. Angle 4 plus angle 5. 4 and 5 supplementary, meaning the sum of the two equals 180. That's called linear pair. Linear pair, linear pair, linear pair. Oh, here at the bottom. And that's going to be my R4. Reason 4. Linear pair. Excellent. Next, angle L is congruent to angle 4. L congruent to angle 4. Okay, so here we go, guys. We, there's a couple ways how, how we can do this. So we just said we just said that angle 4 and angle 5 are supplementary, right? But we also said uh, we're relating L and 4. But we also say that angle L from the given is supplementary to angle 5. Angle A is supplementary to angle 5, and angle 4 is supplementary to angle 5. So, 4 is supplementary to 5, L is supplementary to 5, therefore, L and 4 are congruent. And that's called congruent supplement theorem. And that's going to be my R5. Alright? Because both are supplementary to angle 5, and they're congruent between each other. Congruent supplement theorem. R5, excellent. Let's go to 6 now. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. 3 to angle 4. Okay, angle 3 congruent to angle 4. A couple of ways how we can do that. An easy way. Look at this. Angle Y, I'm sorry, angle L is congruent to angle 3. And angle L is congruent to angle 4. Therefore, 3 and 4 are congruent. And that's called transitive as well. Transitive. So we can put that here. Transitive. And it's going to be R6. That's transitive as well. R6 transitive. Okay. I want to make sure that you guys understand that. Most likely this type of problem is going to, is going to be a drag and drop. So this is going to be a box. And you're going to pull it and put it right there on the top. Next. OR is going to OG. Oh, hold on. We just proved that 3 and 4 are congruent. 3 and 4 are congruent. Let me go back to blue. Oh, nice. Guys, we're done. We're done. Angle 3 congruent to angle 4. Look at that. I just proved that those two little angles are congruent. If those little angles are congruent, then this triangle, the little one on the top, is going to be in a isosceles triangle. If the angles are congruent, then my sides are congruent. And that makes my triangle an isosceles triangle. But hold on. OR is congruent to OG. Yes, OR congruent to OG. And that's called the converse of base angles theorem. I just proved that my angles were congruent. Therefore, the sides are congruent. That's the converse. And that will be recent. That will be R7. So my converse is R7. Last but not least, I just proved that the two sides are congruent. Therefore, I can say that my triangle is a sine isosceles triangle. Why? Because that's the definition. If my sides are congruent, then my triangle is an isosceles triangle, and that's the definition for isosceles triangle R8. Holy cow. A long proof. I hope we understood it. Understood that, guys. All right. Let's tackle 19. I'm sorry, tackle 20. Okay, now we have 20. All right, so let me get the pen first of all that I lost it. All right, 20. Quadrilateral HKDC, right, the outside, is showing where angle, angle, let me see, hold on, let me see. Angle H, hold on, KHD, KHD. So let's, let's do it, K, K, H, D. So this angle, K, H, D. That angle is congruent to HDC. HDC. All right, so it's congruent to this angle. Let's put two marks. Right? Two marks right there, two marks right here. Those two angles are congruent. Nice. Uh, angle DKH. DK, DKH. Oh, that's 90 degrees. And CHD. CHD are right angles. Yeah, those are 90. All right, cool. They're 90. Write an expression using y and z to represent the length of hk. Use the equation editor tool to enter your answer. All right, that's going to be interesting. 
So first of all, uh, let's do one step at a time. So they want me to write HK in terms HK, HK, this side in terms of Z and Y. Okay, I have no idea. And they want me to write the answer into uh, the equation editor. So let's start from the beginning. So first of all, they gave me two angles. So this angle is congruent to, is congruent to this angle. So let me, let, let me look at triangle on the left side. All right, that's triangle. Uh, let's call that K. Hold on, let's start from the big triangle, from the one on the side. So I have this angle congruent to this angle. So let's call that triangle uh, HDC. Triangle HDC. I know that triangle HDC, the triangle on the right side, I'm turning it blue, is similar to triangle on the left side. It's similar to triangle K. So if I start with H, D, C, then I have to start with K, H, D. They're similar. Why? Because I have angle, I have one angle congruent and they're 90 degree angles as well. So I have two angles on each triangle. Angle, 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 angle. So they're similar by the angle, angle similarity theorem. Okay, they're similar. Okay, if two triangles are similar, guys, let me uh, put that in red. If two triangles are similar, then all the angles are congruent. Blue triangle, similar to the red triangle. If the triangles are similar, then all the angles are congruent and the sides are proportional. So that means I have to write some kind of uh, proportionality statement. Okay. So now I just proved that they're similar because angle, angle. After that, I can use all the sides. So now let's write some kind of a similarity statement or um, proportionality statement. There we go. Thinking for the word. So let's do, let's write HD, okay? HD, let's, took, let's take the, the, the triangle on the right. HD, and this is called a proportionality statement. HD over DC, HD over DC, okay, is equal, proportional. The right side is going to be proportional to the triangle on the left. So if I went from the 90 to the angle that I know, I got to go from the 90 to the angle that I know. K, H, 90 to the angle that I know, and then I went diagonal on my hypotenuse. Second triangle the 90 to the angle that I know, the hypotenuse, which is HD. Okay, this is a proportionality statement. Once I write that, I can relate the Y and the Z. So let's see what's going on. HD, HD is Z over DC, but DC is Y. You see? So that proportionality statement is going to help me out. KH. KH, oh, I have no idea what's KH, but remember, KH is the question, right? They want me to write KH over HD, or what's HD? HD is Z. Okay, you notice that they asked me using Y and Z to represent the KH, so I have to leave the KH by itself from here, okay? So that means let's do scroll multiplication so I can leave the KH by itself. So this diagonal is going to be z times z, which is z squared. And that's equal to the other diagonal, y times kh. y times kh. I want to leave the h or kh. In this case, h -A, h k is the same as kh. Let me flip this. y times h k, the same order that they want, all right? z squared. KH and HK is the same thing. I want to leave this segment by itself. I got to cancel the Y. Divide by Y on both sides. In which case, I'm going to have Z squared equals to Y. And now the Y's cancel here, and that's HK. So I have HK in terms of Z squared divided by Y. Guys, I want to have a just video, one video to, to explain the equation editor tool. Okay? If this helped you, please subscribe, like the, the, 